Welcome back to this Miss Euro YouTube channel, guys. We're back on the truck. I did put in the whole cabin harness, inside harness, interior harness, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we're doing this specifically just to test things. Now, you can see I have the wiring harness that's modified. It's basically the Mark 1 and Mark 3 harness combined. And you can see I, I still have things kind of loose and dangling, kind of hanging out in here. But I do have the ignition switch plugged in. I do have the cluster plugged in, so we'll be able to see if the glow plug light works. We will be able to start it, um, even though we're not actually starting it yet. And um, so everything in here is done that way. So we have everything just, like I said, just loosely in here. Uh, I do have the OBD2 plug here because we are going to need to connect to it. And here's power and ground. And what I'm just going to do for now is I'm just going to run wires directly to power and ground when I need it because that'll, that'll be the easiest way. Um, there's no sense in sitting here trying to fish and find these exact wires I need just yet. So back out here, you can see I have the harness coming out through that hole and it kind of comes around. This is all the engine side harness. So this stuff all comes down, injection pump plug, a uh, big connector up there with all the other wires and distribution, coolant plugs, that kind of stuff is all right there. And also we have the uh, starter signal. So we'll have to connect that. This I'll probably cut down later, but yeah, it's just, it's just hanging out for now. So over here, uh, we have, this is like the ECU side. So I will be plugging in the ECU. All this other stuff I'll kind of just be leaving out for now. We'll kind of see where it wants to be, where it will start, where it won't start. Um, and then once all that's figured out, we don't have any smoke, anything on fire. Everything's communicating. I can communicate with VADCOM after all that's good. Then we will proceed to install the fuel filter in a decent location. I'm not sure where I'm going to do it yet. I'll probably have to make a little bracket, but I'll do that, get everything lined up, and then we'll be good to go. And we can then prime the injectors by just cranking the engine over. Do it until you have fuel at this line, fuel at this line, fuel at this line, fuel at this line. Make sure they're all cracked. Once you get fuel there, tighten it. Get fuel there, tighten it, basically. That's the easiest way to start a diesel. We're really close. Remember, I do have this kind of uh, wiring mess right here. This is all the kind of stuff that I cut out um, that does not is not needed because this is not a Mark III anymore. For right now, let's uh, get started in here. We have to get all these powers to the positive on the battery, and then we're gonna have to uh, then we'll have to do the same thing over here with the grounds. I have some grounds here. I need to make a chassis ground and then a ground to the engine. So. Still have some stuff to do, but let's get on with it. So that was a lot of stuff right there. But you guys can see I got all the ground stuff situated. I use all the Mark III stuff, positives and negatives, because they just work. They last a long time and they come with extra ports. So they come with studs and they come with bolt holes. So you can add in a bunch of stuff just like that. All these were the fuse power that I put for the fuse box. 
because remember um they used to be wire that was fusible link wire and i, d I did not want to go that route couldn't find it in time and i figured um, these fuses should work if they don't we'll have to address it down the road i did use the mark three alternator wiring so that comes right over down back to the starter the mark three positive was a little bit too long so i did cut it about i don't know maybe seven inches and then put an end on it heat shrunk it put it on there all that's good to go and then with the ground i left it as it was so it comes all the way down comes down and around right to the transmission bolt with a stud right there so that's as it is oem i did add in a chassis ground that went from right here goes down and around just where the mark one one would go right here i put the uh, oem rabbit hoses on even though these technically aren't oem they've been replaced but i put them on and i use my power pressure bleeder not power bleeder vacuum bleeder that you can use for brakes and i put it right here on the return you put it to air power and you just let it suck it's pretty easy you can see i have plenty of fuel in there so right now what we're about to do this is totally tight on the ground side and i'm just going to set that on there and make sure there's no issues shorts or whatnot can i put it no can i put it <laughs> All right, so nothing is shorted out as of yet. I'm gonna leave it here and make sure it doesn't get hot. All right, everything seems good. Ready? Good. Oh, yep, glow plug light. Okay, so it went on, it went off. You got battery light, oil pressure. All right, turn it off. So now that nothing's caught on fire and I hear stuff clicking up there, it sounds like the fuel shutoff valve is clicking, which means it'll let fuel in. So what I'm going to do now is ensure that the ECU is on. I'm going to take VADCOM plug and I'm going to jump red to power and brown to ground. And then we'll be able to connect this to my computer. Okay guys, I'm in the car. I have VADCOM hooked up. I have the OBD2 connector. I have red just jumped right to the glow plug fuse and brown going up to my one of my main grounds. So you can see I have power. It's lit up and see everything's on. Go to select. This should start blinking. I have it connected. Look at that. ECU is powered up. ECU is online. So now we can see the many, many, many fault codes we're going to have in this system. Basically everything. All right, this is all stuff that I know is not connected. So no issues at all here, close controller. So basically it should, it should just start now. Um, if you have connection to the ECU, that means everything out there should work. You have fuel. All right guys, since I saw you last, uh, a couple things have happened. First is my starter was dead. Uh, maybe it was when I pressure washed it. it rusted it a little more and, and just didn't work it just kept uh wanting to to die like it sounded like the motor was locked up so the starter was bad had another one put it in then that starter got stuck out it was just an ordeal so there's a brand new starter there and then i come back i put it on and the battery was now dead so i just i just put it on the charger I did a crank without you guys, sorry, but it uh, worked really good. You can see uh, I got all fuel up here, every single line wet. So that means all I gotta do is just close these up and then theoretically it'll start next time. But yeah, sorry, sorry I couldn't show you guys that. It's just been issue after issue with with just dumb stuff battery charger have it on as high as it can go but it can only go so high so we've got to kind of let it charge up again i probably only got about 20 seconds out of it but i got all the fuel up there so we just gotta let it charge a little bit more 
I didn't take this thing apart. So I gotta kind of figure out where things go. And uh, I was looking in the wiring harness. So in case you guys get here, the N75 valve, the wire is red and blue. And then the EGR, which most people delete, this is brown and white. And the PCV heater up here is red and green. In case you get in this predicament, that's that'll help you out. I'm leaving the uh, math unplugged because I, I don't have any intercooler piping hooked up. So I feel like it'll kind of make it run in default mode. I took one intercooler pipe and just put it on so I had the, the vacuum uh, routing to the ECU. As long as the battery has enough in it, it should be able to start, so we'll see. Did you like it, bud? Yeah? <laughs> Here, give me a high five, bud. Are you happy that it started? Yep. So yeah, guys, everything worked. Thing fired right up. It's pretty sweet. Obviously, there's no coolant, nothing like that hooked up, so you're not really testing everything. You're just making sure it starts. So I'm pretty happy with it. My wife was happy. Cam, my man, was happy. I wish Violet was out here. I'll have to start it for, for her in the morning. But yeah, man, it fired. It fired right up. Nothing more you could ask for. Thanks for watching. Please check out all the videos on the truck. It's that much closer to running, uh, running properly. Uh, right now it's kind of hacked together, but it's there. Uh, next episode, we are going to be finishing up all the wiring because right now, we know everything works as it should right now. So all we have to do is just start routing everything, putting everything in its final location, doing the nice taping and that kind of stuff, finishing all that. And then once the wiring stuff is done, then I can dive into uh, intercooler piping and all that. So thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for your continued support. So see you guys uh, in the next one.